Welcome to season nine. It's season nine, and I can't believe it. I still remember season one. Uh, welcome to season nine, division two, match day one. How far we've come. Uh, I'm your host, TVC, and I'm joined by. It's Laser back in the booth. Welcome back, Laser. Second time this week. Thank you for covering our Founder Shield earlier this week to kickstart our competitive season. Uh, but today we've got uh, Division 2 ahead of us. What do we have on the docket? Um, looks like we will have... Uh, we will have... Uh, my brain. Paris. Uh, Romana and Paris uh, will be one of the games that we have today. And the other ones I neglected to write down. So that was a error on my part. That's all right. I happen to have the backup here. Evil laugh. Uh, we'll have uh, Reykjavik <laughs> taking on uh, Cairo City. Cairo City, of course, new to Division 2, having uh, spent the entirety of the team's history in Division 1, but uh, now finding themselves... Uh, <laughs> in the second division for the first time. Yeah, they uh, barely got relegated last season. It was a close race down to the very end. Came down to the last match day in a head-to-head -head versus Catalonia. And Cairo has basically torn down the entire team and uh, rebuilt. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do this year. They've definitely got an interesting uh, f future ahead of them now. Uh, of course, one of the players to leave was Franco Torres, who had himself a day uh, in Division 1 to kickstart the year. We'll see if his team can follow it up. But uh, first, we'll see the match you mentioned earlier. It's AC Monity on AS Perry. Yeah, and uh, Paris didn't really have a whole lot of changes in the offseason. They uh, they did lose Peter Oak to free agency. He went to Reykjavik, and they did draft Axel Jafari. Uh, besides that, no changes for the Paris side, which that is, of all the changes that did happen in Division Two this season, they are remarkably the same as to what they were last season. And on the Romana side, they, uh, they did a lot of changes. They... Uh, Traded for Vui Kimuatu. They signed Powdered Toastman and Yves Matthew. And Yves Matthew they did then loan out to uh, Sao Paulo. And they also traded for Kazenga Lua Lua, the goalkeeper. And Pascal Anavier is making his Romana debut after being on loan for two seasons. Yeah, is your Romana really looking to make that push this year? Uh, they had a good go at the uh, mid-table last year, and well, Laser, how do you feel about your chances coming into this season? Uh, I would be surprised if we don't promote. I would be too. Definitely one of the stronger rosters in Division 2 at the moment, but uh, of course, AS Perry, you mentioned it, they didn't have a ton of team movement, uh, and what that means, they kept the majority of their Division 1 roster together. Yeah. Yeah, Puri is also one of the favorites to be promoted. I think there's these two teams facing off in the first match day is going to be a real test of quality to see uh, kind of where Romana's really at. First five minutes of play have been uh, largely quiet. We saw a couple of chances there, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I think both teams just trying to uh, feel the defense, uh, get get a good feel of the rhythm of the game. Uh, they're both lined up in a 4-2-3-1, I believe. Yeah. Ambitious shot from Jeremiah, but Barfoot makes the save. Uh, Paris is in an asymmetric 4-2-3-1. They have a uh, central attacking mid and a left attacking mid. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird, staggered formation from AS Pippi. Uh, ooh, Schweinsteiger oh. nearly had the first of the year yet again. Just outside. 
so we'll see if the overload from Escarie gets the better of uh, AC Romana today. Yeah, they are. Romana is stronger in the middle than they are on the wing, so it could end up working in their favor. Oh, that's King Watu up to King, and King just missed high. I was surprised you John shot there. Yeah, that was that was a heck of a run. And Brisky will take the first corner of the game for Curry. Headed away. Something I will also note as interesting is that uh, at the tip of this formation, uh, Cortez now. Ooh. I thought for sure that was going in, but it was just outside the far post. Sorry, at the tip of the Escarie's formation is Alistair, not Papadopoulos. Yeah, Papadopoulos playing in that uh, central attack mid position, if I remember correctly. Yes, he's an attacking midfielder today, playing behind uh, Alistair. Yeah, usually Papadopoulos is the team's main weapon, but... I guess they're trying something different today. And that was a very quiet first half. Uh, yeah, relatively uh, relatively easy going from both sides. Uh, I think we saw the better of the chances from AC Romana, but uh, in terms of possession, didn't pay a pretty, uh, pretty balanced game. Yeah, a few more fouls from Paris, so they didn't really, uh, don't think they ever really got into motion. But they did have more quarters. Right. It is worth noting we are in Rome today. Is Romana at home? Romana opening the season at home. I think perhaps for the first time. I don't recall if they have been at home to start the season before. But for Paris, it's uh going on the road to begin the season after, and Paris did play Romana in the uh, preseason match too, so they did just lose to them. They'll be, they'll have a little bit extra motivation to get one back over them when it really counts now. But we do have a substitution for Romana. It's John Zoidberg coming in for Tyson King. A as pretty get... important sub uh, as King was on a yellow there. Yeah. Yeah, King had picked up the yellow in the 28th. Paris has uh, Jay Brisky on a yellow, caught in the 18th. He's one of their, uh, I believe he's their right back. Yeah, no Left back. No, nope, you said it right the first time. He is a right back. Okay. He is playing on the left today, though, it looks like. Or no, I'm crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. He is on the right. Oh, there's Jeffrey Levert. Has a chance. Shoots. Barflip stops. You know what helps, Laser? If you hold your fingers up in front of you, the one that's right makes the L is the, uh, it's the left one. <laughs> yeah. I do it all uh, the time. That doesn't help as much, though, when it's oriented so that you would have to make a U facing the other way. Fair. 61st minute already, and there's still not a ton of action coming from either side. Washburn puts it all the way back to Barflip. And that'll go straight to Lua Lua. I think Esperi are just good enough defensively that their lack of offensive compatibility is really nullified by their by AC Romani's inability to penetrate their final third. Yeah. Although here's a chance. It's Schweinsteiger shoots. Barflip makes the save. It's cleared out by uh one of the defenders there, I couldn't tell what, exactly which. Or, it could be that Barflet is having a very good day. Yeah, Barflet has made a lot of saves today. Romana haven't particularly tried to round him at all, they've kind of just shot it directly at him, but... Cortez has an opportunity, and Lua Lua makes a save. Isabella Cortez gets so many of those chances. It's unfortunate because their conversion rate is not great. 
Yeah, Cortez is pretty good at getting deep into the box from that winger position, but just has a little bit of, well, a little bit of trouble controlling the ball in that instance, but yeah, also a little bit of, sure. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of trouble getting shots on target. Yeah, Boy Barflet having a good day. Seven shots on target for Romana. They can't get one past him. Esperi just got there first. Yeah. Zoidberg back into Jeremiah. Up to Zoidberg again. Puts it across. Intended for out of the air. But Perry is able to clear it. Nunez up to Anavir on the left wing. Back to Milton Nunez. Cortez tackles, but Nunez gets it right back. Puts in a cross, headed by Schweinsteiger, and Barfoot makes the save. That was Milton Nunez. He's having himself a pretty decent day, despite being on that yellow card. If anything, being on that yellow card shows how, how actively involved he's been so far in this match. Yeah. Yeah, the Nunez brothers have been quite good for Ramana on those uh, right and left back positions. Yeah. Cortez with the cross. Papadopoulos shoots and Lua Lua makes the save. Papadopoulos didn't really have the best angle there. Jay Brisky will put in the corner. Headed out by Smart. And still a very quiet game as here's a corner from Anavier. Puts it in, headed towards the net, held by Barflet again. They cannot, they're just shooting it directly at Barflet, making it very easy for him to save these shots. Washburn hoofs it up the field. Tyson Nunez will end up with it. Pass forward to Anavier. Puts in a cross for Levert, but Zoidberg. Grabs it, cleared out by Perry, oh, and that's a free. Barely offside from McAllister. Yeah, and Toastman will take the free kick. Only one minute of stoppage time, and that means there's only one minute left in the match. Toastman on the wing to Nunez puts it back into Anavier. That's a three ball to Zoidberg on the wing, shoots and it's outside. Outside the post, net. that should be it. Unless Barflick kicks this into someone's foot. Yes, only about 20 seconds. It's. I'd imagine they're just going to want to clear it deep. There it is. Clear deep, Nunez grabs. And... Perhaps well, here's Milton shot. Nunez. They might get one last shot. Zoidberg to Nunez. Oh, bro. Oh! <laughs> Pritchie gets away with probably a red card and a free kick outside the box because your ref blew the whistle just a second before he made the tackle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Romano's going to be very disappointed that they weren't able to come out with the win at 17 shots with 10 on target and they couldn't get one past Bory Barflet. Their defense for Ramada did play very well, though, with Tyson Nunez picking up the player of the match. And Peri themselves, they didn't play terribly. I think that not having Papadopoulos in that striker position did hurt them a little bit, but still nine shots, only two of them on target, but their back line also played extremely well. Yeah. Defenders picking up the player of the game or from uh, both sides, I believe. Uh, I really do think that uh, Boyer Barfoot got robbed of a player of the game award there, but, you know, they're going to say it's a team effort. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, Vermont just couldn't get that one past the line. They did get the one point out of it, but... You'd always prefer three to one. Yeah, I think coming into this match, though, had you uh, had you said it was going to be a draw, 
I would have said that would have been a fair result. Yeah. On paper. Yeah, I would agree with that. And up next, we will have Reykjavik in Cairo City. Which is uh, a bit ironic, considering the number of players from Cairo that Reykjavik now has. They've traded for... Uh, Reykjavik traded for Malachi Black, Patrick Bjorkas, and Ketchup Noodle from uh, Cairo prior to the start of this season. They also signed Peter Oak from Paris. And they most notably traded for Scott Sterling, the former Division One goalkeeper from Hollywood. That is probably the biggest shock move to, for me this year. Um, Miko Rashford moving away from Hollywood, probably number two. But Scott Sterling is probably one of the faces I identify with the most uh, with Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's, it was very surprising to see uh, to see him move. There's a 4-1, one, four, one, probably, from Reykjavik, and a 5-3-2 from Cairo. Some unique formations from both sides today. Yeah. And as for Cairo, they also traded... Uh, they lost Elvis the Heretic in free agency, who did, in fact, replace uh, Scott Sterling in Hollywood. They also traded Franco Torres to Buenos Aires in Division One, and they traded Pierre Oud to London in Division One. Then loaned in Dominic Wilk from Catalonia. That's a aggressive tackle from Dominic Wilk, who was loaned in from Catalonia after being traded from Montreal. And it, I'm just seeing it now, but it looks as though Cairo has also signed Alexander Stoy Stoyakovic from Nevada. I think that uh, Reykjavik has to be the strong favorite in this match. Oh, Cody Hill got across to make that save, but Oak was offside anyway. I think this Cairo team's a little bit strange. Um... I think overall you're right. Uh, right now they're attacking front just. Oh, five. there's one off of a corner. Roberto Scarpetta off the corner from Hall. Just drilled it into the back of the net. And uh, that is the Roberto Scarpetta as uh, the only Scarpetta to be in this match at the moment. Scarpetta sitting on the bench. Yeah, the Scarpetta brothers have been a hallmark of Frankovic leading up to this point. Yeah, and uh, that really kind of emphasizes an uh, era of change here, Frankovic. Yeah. Yeah, Letizia with a good dribble. The work got to it and shot, but Stoyakovic was able to block, and then it's cleared out by just in time. Good in the diver. That was a curling shot that looked like it had a chance, but Cody Hill able to get over and put it behind. Cody Hill played for, I believe, Tokyo last. Uh, I don't know if he played for another team before coming to Cairo. Uh, he Reykjavik traded. Uh, Kazenga Lua Lua to Ramana, and as a part of that trade, Ramana sent Cody Hill over to Cairo. Ah, so Hill played for Ramana last year. Yes, he was their uh, he was their original goalkeeper, and then dispossessed by Lua Lua. Overall, this is a much quieter game than I was anticipating. Cairo is doing pretty well defensively to keep. Uh, Reykjavik from really getting any clear chances. They haven't really done a lot of attacking, but... Yeah, as you would turn out, that 4-1-4-1 is really kind of uh, balanced out by the five-back defensive formation here from Cairo. 
their three midfielders also kind of track back really well. Yeah. Oh, that was a good cross from Lopta. And uh, Rourke headed it, but Hill made the save. However, it was really on the corner on that set piece where everything was equal that uh, Sarpeno was able to find the difference. Yeah. Oh, that was a good looking chance, but Black got his head on it. And now it's a counter for Reykjavik. Overwork put it over to Letizia. Oh, Cairo playing with fire. They do get the clearance. The forward pass. The new draftee to Cairo, Jean Claude Gaudam. Oh, that's Zizou Lopta. Crossed Hill up and put it on the far side. And that's a second assist of the game for Eric Hall. First of the year for Lopta there. Cutting in on the left winger here. That was just a great through ball by Eric Hall. Recognized that there was an opening, got it straight through to Lopta and just froze Cody Hill where he stood. Now Malachi Black doing very well on that uh, Reykjavik defensive line. It looks as though uh, Jean-Claude simply doesn't have the acceleration that uh, Cairo is used to from Franco Torres, and they are putting through balls a bit too far out, just making it very easy for Reykjavik to get to them. There's another chance from Lopta, but Arisov tackles. What I was, uh, I think, trying to say earlier is that, oh, oh come on, another, another foul as I'm trying to make this point. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll drop it. Andrews with a double shot, but doesn't get either of them in. It was a bit too, a bit too tight of an angle. Malachi Black is just dominating that back line, which is interesting. Oh, Rourke had an ambitious shot, but that was well over. Malachi Black typically has played as a uh, central midfielder, I thought. So that is very interesting to see him on the back line. He's got a flexible range in that uh, midfield position. Able to play defensively in that defensive midfield, and even big enough to play as a center back. So, uh, I think he's played there once or twice. For his other teams. We'll see if he stays there this year, though. Yeah, I would. It will be very interesting to see what happens with that. Oh, well, there's one for Harry Andrews. Just behind. Reykjavik is playing some really impressive stuff here today. And it's still only 35 minutes. That was a through ball that was uh, several yards ahead of where they wanted it to be. And again, Cairo just cannot break that back line of Brinkovic. You know, they're getting it close, he's getting ahead of the way just like there, and there's Lachlan O'Rourke puts it over. There we go, Cairo. Ah, Lemjid had a great through ball to Regan, but it was tackled, and nothing coming. There's Ernest Lemjid, saved by Scott Sterling, and John Claude Godin was offside anyway. So the strikers from Cairo, I believe, both are rookies. I believe so. So we had experience about front line as many times as we can. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a... Uh, last time we had a little the diver took a shot. I don't see that very often. Eric Hall dispossessed by uh, uh, Big Leskins. I think is how I would say that. Cairo has a lot of players with uh, very difficult to pronounce names. Oh, there's another one for Scarpetta, and it's off a corner again. And that's a hat trick of assists for Eric Hall. Two goals for Roberto Scarpetta. Neither of those names are difficult to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Ah, and Cairo, even with those two defenders standing in the goal, they can't keep it out. And what a half it's been for right now. It's not quite over. They're probably going to want to do it, put another one in here, but they really don't need to. It's... I don't think that Cairo are going to be able to come back from this if they can't even... I mean, they've breached the back line only twice. Another chance for Reykjavik, saved by Hill. And there's the half. And it's been uh, nothing short of domination for Reykjavik. The single shot that we saw from, uh, I believe it was Arnos Klemjid, was saved by Scott Sterling. And 27 shots for Reykjavik, 12 shots on target. Two goals off of corners, which typically you don't really even see one, so that is something to watch for. And Eric Hall is just really the main the main player for Reykjavik today with his three assists. Yeah, it's kind of absolutely dominant half for Reykjavik. Uh, I think their three goals are a uh, proof and testament to that enough. We'll see if they can continue into the second half without momentum, and if they can, then that's going to be a lot of bad news for Cairo. Yeah. Yeah, Cairo. I think they knew that they were going to have a little bit of a difficult season after trading away nearly all of their core, as well as losing some more to free agency, but even a I would have expected more than one shot on goal. Well, every team has a bad half. Uh, Kairos so very new. Maybe this is their worst half of the year. And it's only better from here. Yeah, very possible. And uh, we did have a substitution that I uh, glossed over as I was talking too much of work shoots, but it's a good bit outside. Uh, ketchup Noodle came on. For I believe it was uh, Lopta, Zizu Lopta. Indeed, the goal for Lopta being subbed off for uh, Ketchup Noodle. The Ketchup Noodle is the former Cairo man, so not surprised that they would put him on to try and give his former team the what for. He's also for played for Seoul as well. We saw the original team he was strapped to. Okay, I didn't know that. There's O'Rourke. There it is. Lachlan O'Rourke beats Hill. That was just a great play. Peter Oak put in the through ball, broke through the defense. And O'Rourke, Hill came out to meet him, and that proved to be a bit of a mistake, although I don't know what else he could have done. Drills at home and it's 4 nil Reykjavik. Yeah, that was just kind of one of those tactical uh, issues. Uh, and that being Cairo's backlash is too far up. Uh, if they were further back, they'd be able to intercept that or be ready for that. But uh, as it turns out, uh, when you're as quick as Lachlan or Rourke, you get behind those pretty easily. And what you need is a good pass, Peter Oak supplies that. Yeah. 
They almost had another chance there, but Stoyakovic beat O'Rourke to the punch. The diver to Bjorkus to Oak. Through ball. Intended for Andrews, but Wilk grabs it. Hill att attempted to clear it, but gave it right back to Oak. Oh, Harley Andrews has one. Very well worked by Reykjavik. They had shots on goal or very close to it three times there, and the third one finally made it through. What a beautiful set of passing. Uh. Yeah, that was... Letitia put it into O'Rourke. Back to Andrews, took a first-time shot into the left corner. That was the 31st shot of the match for right now. Yeah, and the second goal of the half in, well, less time than it took them to score one in the first. Feels like right to have found out how to, to attack the Saro defense. Yeah. Yeah, Cairo is struggling now to really even retain possession, it looks like. Look at all those bodies in the front. Yeah. It's just not fair. They are crowding the box. It's like a swarm of nets. Yeah. Yeah, and any time that Cairo tries to clear it, Drinkovic has it back up. There's O'Rourke. He's shooting high. And offside. And offside. Only one shot on the day for Cairo. Yeah, that is a. Uh... Hopefully, they can make some changes to. Uh... Oh, that was <laughs> an ambitious header. Yeah, that... <laughs> I I don't know that I've seen something like that before. <laughs> Liz Eifer said, "Fine, I'll do it myself." Yeah, or perhaps he was just trying to have some fun with it. Eric Hall put in the corner. It was given right back to him. And Eric Hall is just all over the ball at the moment. Now it will finally be headed out to the other side where Hall the Diver will control. And the Diver shoots. Yeah, the Diver is definitely just having fun with it at this point. Trilled it off the back of the left of Rourke's head. I know he yeah. appreciates that. <laughs> yeah. Letissier is going to shoot. Hill makes the save. Seeing these, uh, the defenders shooting is always a sight to see. Usually, if a defender scores, it's off of a, off of a set piece where they headed in. But every once in a while, you get situations like this where the defenders are just going at it because why not? Yeah, um, this is a very aggressive formation. Uh from Reykjavik. Yeah. O'Rourke, or excuse me, Bjork is to O'Rourke, who shoots and Hill saves. Norm has cleared it to the left wing for uh, Wilk. Now Cairo is working. The through ball to Jean-Claude Goddam. He has a shot. Puts it right in Sterling's breadbasket. That is the second shot of the day. And the first on target. Sterling not having too much to do in his debut. Yeah. Yeah, if he needed to get settled into a new squad and kind of learn the ropes, I suppose you could say. Although there isn't much learning to be done for a keeper of Sterling's quality. But familiarizing himself, this, this would be the game to do it, where he only has to save the one shot. I think he's got a very interesting view. Or could just missed. 
Yeah, I half expect, uh, I halfway expect Sterling to start coming forward and shooting the way the defenders have been up at the front. I think that, uh, only a desperation move in times like these that would be, uh, seen as, um, a dick move. Well, that's fair. That's very fair. Bjork is just barely over. Interesting decision from uh, Cairo Parrot to uh, play the ball into Reykjavik's far corner to absolutely no one. Yeah, that looked like uh, some miscommunication between Justin Time and Dominic Wilk. And Reykjavik is still just... They want more. The diver shot, but was offside. Paul the diver getting very much involved in this match. Yeah. Yeah, the diver ranging forward a good bit from that left back position. There's a through ball from Regim to Jean Claude Godam, who shoots, and Sterling makes a second save of the day. That was a. That was the best move that we've seen from Cairo thus far. That looked very well put together. Now it's a clean sheet saving uh, effort from Scott Sterling, showing just what value he brings to the team. He'll have several of those this year, I suspect. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd be, uh, I would be rather surprised if Sterling does not have the most clean sheets in Division Two. As O'Rourke misses again. A mercy, a mercy ball. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult to say whether O'Rourke is just not having his best day in front of goal, missing most of these sh shots that he's been taking, or if he uh, is purposely missing at this stage. You never want to run up the score once it gets to a point where you're confident of winning. Unless it's a goal difference thing, but in week one, that hardly matters. Andrews to Bjorkus, who shoots off the post. That's the second one that Bjorkus has had just too high. I I gotta say, at this point, it looks like he's trying to score and just missing. Because you, you don't do that twice by accident. Yeah. Or oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, yeah, perhaps mercifully for Cairo, that is it. Uh, that's 90 minutes and more gone, and it's 5 0 for Reykjavik, who had, uh, count them, 50 shots on the day. I don't know that I have ever seen that many shots. I've, I've worked in bars and not seen that many shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, uh,. I don't think there's a whole lot to go over after that, other than Eric Hall with a hat trick of assists and uh, Roberto Scarpetta with the two goals, which I'm actually going to look. I'm curious to see how many Scarpetta had prior in his career. Unfortunately, no hat trick from Scarpetta. I don't think we've had defensive hat trick yet. Maybe one in the, in the history. I don't remember who, though. I'd be surprised if we had one. Yeah, they just don't happen very often. Most defensive goals come off of set pieces. And those are kind of a uh, draw of the luck. Yeah, and it... I I assumed as much, but I can confirm that... Uh, what a formation from Accra. That is a... Uh, well, we'll go over that in a minute. But it is the... Third goal of uh, second and third goals of Roberto Scarpetta's career, the last goal coming in Season 7. 
Yeah. So uh, break the ice on the new year with two goals. Yeah. For a defender, that is an excellent way to break the ice. It's uh, it's better than some strikers today. Uh, I can say that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Not throwing shade. That's just gonna be a statistical fact. Yeah. Yeah, those strikers will hook uh, that. Excuse me, English is difficult. Those strikers will have their chance to uh, catch up to Scarpetta, who I believe currently is leading the Golden Boot race. Although I suppose it'd be the Golden Doggin race in this case. Nope, still a Golden Boot. It's the D2 yeah. Golden Boot. Yeah. But our next match is going to be Accra and Kopstad. And both of these teams also underwent some changes, though not a ton, as we see that uh, 4 2 3 1 from Kopstad and then uh, 11 players on the field for Accra. I don't even know. A 6 2 2? Is that what that is? Uh, I would say 3 5. That makes sense. The Accra traded uh, Vui Kimuatu to Rome for two first round picks. And they've also loaned in uh, Hinata Hyuga from Athena. Then Kapstad made a good number of moves as well. They've uh, released two players. They lost Jonas Krustis to free agency and immediate, or excuse me, to retirement, and then drafted Jonas Krustis Jr. And they've also loaned in four players this season: Renato de Silva from Catalonia, and then Rafael Ramos, Gino Chouinard. Chouinard? How do you, I don't know how you would say that name? Uh, and Mark Spoon, and loaned out David Doug to Seoul. Yeah, a lot of movement. Yeah, it has been one of the crazier off-seasons that has ever been in the league, which is, I personally love to see crazy off-seasons because it shows a, uh, it just makes things interesting, gives you something to look forward to when the new season arises to see how things really pan out. Yeah, I find it interesting how, uh, how much movement we're getting. Yeah, I think that the uh, the salary cap is starting to take a toll on some teams. I that was the reason that uh, Miko Rashford was traded away from Hollywood was because of the cap. That Dexter Hall came out to grab that ball, and Berbatov almost beat him to it. Now Tucker is on the wing. Doesn't really have anyone crashing with him, and. Uh, Free kick for Kopstad. Tucker's offside. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's the salary cap partially. I think that the promotion and relegation races are getting a bit tighter, and so teams are willing to uh, give up more than they previously were. I also think that teams are starting to have a little bit more idea of where their best players are at. Is there's a shot that's high from Tucker. And so they're willing to trade away more assets than they previously were. And I also think it's a regression is coming very quickly, and so teams are starting to plan for that and prepare to uh, tackle regression without losing a ton of anything. Kapstad making an attacking run. Come to anything. Or, yep, nope, doesn't come to anything. And Akra is going to counter. Tucker gets to the line again. He's pretty good at doing that, but Spoon has been able to box him out so far. And uh, Zerhuni just hoofed that one into the into, into the back line. There's absolutely no one there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Offside is Scud Muffin. Clark headed, or excuse me, passed it. Wow, what an ambitious shot. Saved by LaRock. LaRock? LaRock. Yes, LaRock. Oh, my pronunciation is difficult at best. That's alright. English is a weird language. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to pronounce other languages. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think LaRock would be LaRock in French. That sounds about right. And Llewellyn there, that gave me fits the first time I had to pronounce his name. <laughs> That's Welsh. Yeah. Still not a ton of quality chances on either side, but I will say I believe that Accra have been more threatening. They've been able to get further in to the box. Kopstad has been largely kept out of the box up to this point. Although here is a uh, corner from Scud Muffin. Just over. now has a run. Oh, is that going to be a penalty? No, they're going to say it's a good tackle by Clark and, uh, sorry, good tackle on Clark, and that's going to be a corner. Yeah, that looked, uh, it looked interesting, but it is not the penalty, and so it's still nil-nil, because they can't do anything on the corner. Top stud is looking better as the half goes on, I will say. Oh my, Clark had a good idea there to get it to De Silva, but Taco Cat got there first and saved a certain goal. LaRocque was able to clear up that for uh, Akra and uh, Kapsha pressing now. Yeah, yeah, Kapsha that seems as though as the half goes on, they are waking up. Exactly. Yep. Set pieces. Yep, teams need to learn that, uh... Oh, oh what a free kick from Scud Muffin. Rock makes the save, but that was very well placed. Yeah, teams need to learn to not give it back to whoever put the corner in. It's the AI. It's, uh... For some reason, I think it's a reasonable decision to make. Yeah. It is not, but that is... AI will do as it pleases sometimes. I, Clark. I, sh I oh. sure hope not. We'd have uh, we'd have Skynet on our hands. <laughs> Another quiet game so far today. That seems to be the theme. Not a lot of scoring going on, other than well, Rankovic. Here's a chance. Tucker forward to Cat. He doesn't really have anyone crashing with him, and that is going to be out for a corner. I think, I think that... that uh, oh, go ahead. I think that early on in the year that uh, teams are really just trying to get a feel for how they operate individually amongst competition. And as the year goes on, that uh, we're going to see them... Uh, adapt a little bit better to uh, the teams around them and start figuring out how to attack the defense. Yeah, I think so. And I think that uh, that looks promising there for a moment from Muffin. Trenard to Clark. Clark shoots and The Rock makes the save. Can I just I think say, the Silver's a giant of a man? Yeah. Rivals Sky Rise. He is hulking over that field. Yeah, he is massive. And, and a, that's the first half. A quiet one, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, 
54% possession for Capshad, it reflects in their attacking opportunities, but not a ton of clear-cut chances. Yeah. Yeah, equal number of corners and fouls. Well, nearly equal. And it's... Really, I think that Accra can do a lot better than they are currently. But I think that their formation in only having those two attacking players uh, and then having everyone else in the backfield is preventing them from being able to really get any really good chances out. And as we've we've seen that we have seen that uh, Accra has had a lot of players running up the wings uh, and looking to get a cross back into the middle of the field, but there just hasn't been anybody there to. Uh, to take it, and it's been completely flooded by the back line of uh, Kopstad. And then on the other hand, we've seen uh, Giannis Christus Jr. in the poacher position for Kopstad, and poacher is not a uh, not particularly a role that we'll see leap or runs. It's more of a hang around, wait for something to come to you, try and stay out of the mind of the defense. So it's, uh, and that combined with that uh, performation, as we see Gary Hogg and uh, I missed the other player. It was Zimmer coming in. Zimmer, I thought so. Gary Hogg and uh, Mike Zimmer coming in for Gino Schwenard and. Uh, uh, I don't remember the other one. Mark I need Spoon. to stop talking. Spoon, that's who it was. I need to stop talking with his substitutions. You're good. I always have them written down somewhere. Cause... Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a goal for Rob Tucker. They heard me talking and they said, you are wrong. Tucker almost did it himself there. Made the dribble up the middle. Saw Urban Trout on the wing, pushed it over to him, made the run, got back on the ball. Hall got his fingers on it a bit, it looked like, but didn't do enough to block it outside. And we have a 1-0 lead for Accra. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a mix-up after the changes came in for uh, Kapstad and AC Romano were able to capitalize right away. Just a little bit of a lap. That was dangerous. Caps that are going to want to get themselves back into it. They've had, they've had the chances, as that was a header, headed shot from Krustis, but it was over. They've had their chances, haven't been able to bury them as yet, but still a lot of time left in the match. Oh. Ambitious shot from De Silva, but it was a bit outside, and the Rock saved it anyway. Go Cat pushing towards the wing, crossed. Here's their Huni puts it over. Well, and on a yellow now for Accra. That, that happened recently. It'll be interesting to see if uh, this press can be maintained here. We saw earlier in the game that Capstone had an attacking edge. Yeah. Yeah, cops not have been trying to do something. That was. I was them trying to do something. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> ambitious. I believe is the right term. Deonta Freddy. Oh, I thought that might have had a chance, but he missed.
Oh, oh, Rob oh. Decker looking like he might be injured. He's not going to come out of the game. He stays on, so I'm not quite sure. Matter of fact, he just picked up a yellow. Wonder, I wonder if that was for embellishment. I, I would also be very interested to see that. It's not often that your striker picks up a yellow. But now he doesn't seem to have any problems as he shoots from distance and misses high. Oh, Capstad controlled the throw up to Krustis. Puts it back for Gary Hogg. Kamavinga to Zimmer up to Hogg again. Puts it across, headed out by Llewellyn. And that was a promising chance for Capstad, but it's not going to come to anything. coming again will we see them pull off the counter they tried but Tucker couldn't get it on target difficult angle yeah maybe distracted by the lack of uh, fans lack of away fans yeah although this is the easiest uh Easiest stadium for Aqua fans to get to, really. Yeah, it really is. It's the uh, Battle of Africa. Yeah. Well, Cairo also in Africa. No, true. True, true, true. Dion! Berbatov had a shot that bounced off the line, and Dion put it towards the net, but over. We have seen a lot of high misses today. Yeah, strikers are the uh, players just really getting under the ball. I think that this is a uh, regulated pitch. So uh, no accusations of turf sinking. And it's the start of the year, so the pitch should be pretty perfect. But uh, you never know, someone might overwater. Oh. Oh, Berbatov missed. That was a great chance for Akra to make it 2-0, and Berbatov just missed it. And then that through ball for Zuhuni is saved by Hall. I don't know if that technically counts as a save, actually. Ooh, Whittington dispossesses Chrysler Jr. before the ball even gets to him. Doesn't get called for it. I expected to see a call there. And that is probably going to just about do it now that that has not come to anything. The Rock is going to take his or perhaps not going to take his time. But there's 10 seconds. Difficult to imagine that Kopstad is going to be able to pull it out. There it is. And they don't. Akra will take the three on a 1-0 game. Rob Tucker, the hero for Akra. Yeah. And Kopstad, they didn't have hardly any chances that second half. Yeah, but, but based on the work that they did in the first half, you uh, you probably think that they uh, they feel like they deserved a goal today. Uh, that would have equalized the match, but uh, no, that defense from Akra played really well too. So I, yeah. I think it was a, eh, all things considered, a fair result both ends. I think so, yeah. I think that perhaps you could argue that it would deserve to be a 1-1 tie, but... Because defense played well enough to keep them out, and with those, well, really those eight players in the backfield, it's going to be difficult for any team to get past that. Yes. Uh, speaking of teams that are difficult to get past, we're going to see Montreal playing against Red Star Lau. Montreal traditionally playing in a three or five back formation. Uh, normally pr pretty good defensively while maintaining their offensive edge. Red Star Lau on the other hand known for uh, throwing it to the wall. Mm 
Yeah, close. It, last season they were. I mean, they finished the season on an extremely high note with the high-powered scoring and uh, not the best defense. But if you score enough, the other team. I mean, the end goal is score more than the other team. So if you're scoring more than they are, then you don't really need to have that good of a defense as long as you can keep it up on offense. But you know, the saying is, "They ask how many, they don't ask how." Good grief. What is that? A 5 2 3 for Montreal? And a 4 2 3 1 with defensive midfielders from Red Star. I would say Montreal swing in a 5 2 1 2. 5 2 1 2. Yeah, I can see that. I would imagine that, uh, well, I can't see the roles, but. Montreal has made some moves, and one of those moves was signing uh, Ariana Tokino Nagatoro from Red Star. So she is playing against her former team here in the first match of the season, and I would imagine that she is in a shadow striker role. I can confirm. No, they are playing as a advanced playmaker on attack. Okay. It is attacking. That's. I am a little bit surprised that's not a Shadow Striker, but then again, they already do have the two up top, so if you had a third Shadow Striker, it's essentially taking out another member of the team that's not going to contribute on defense. Is there a Guerra put a shot on target? It was offside, though. Oh, was he? I missed that. Montreal went through a large number of changes in the offseason as they have loaned in Alessio Calvatore from Hollywood, who was the, uh, the regular sub for the Del Valor last season, now taking their talents to Montreal for the season. Yeah, They've, part of the cap casualties in Hollywood uh, over there. Calvatore, a massive part in their, uh, in their I believe, back-to-back -back championships. Yeah. Yeah, back to back for Hollywood, but Calvatore won't be a part of the hat trick if they are able to get there. Neither will Miko Rashford. Yeah. Or Scott. Tame. Yeah, Sterling, I believe, will have a bit of a chance. Oh, wow. Modelo shot from a good distance away, but Duke made the save. Brian Duke now uh, one of the key parts to uh, to Montreal's team there, having played a large part for a number of years now. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other other couple of changes for uh, Montreal were loading in Kevin DeBernia from Hollywood. Uh, they traded Dominic Wilk to Catalonia, where he was promptly loaned out to Cairo. And they traded Bismo Funyuns to Sao Paulo for Mac Fred and Seth Dolan. Yeah, that's a lot of moves. Yeah, and plus their draftees, Gareth Allard and Vinnie Jones. Now forgive me for saying so, but I've said it for a few years now. Cairo, sorry, Montreal are building something, but at this point, uh, Osmodoni oh. <laughs> drills the post. I don't know what they're building. They just continue to build. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't help that they lost uh, Yves Matthew in free agency as well. He was one of the centerpieces of that back line. Weren't able to retain him. Casual has a bit of a chance. Can't get there fast enough, and there's a goal for Ariadna. Ariadna, Nitaro, Maradona able to put that into the top corner out of the reach of the keeper not much you can do a well placed shot from a really good spot absolutely unmarked that's what happens yeah yeah the Bernia just did an excellent job redirecting that back pass from casual now it's going to be on Red Star Laos to get it back yeah, which, if Furious Chicken is on the field, you have to imagine that there's a good chance that they will. Ooh, oh! That's 
clean tackle by Fanto Benz. They say nothing but ball. Certainly, <laughs> the, the striker would, uh, or sorry, winger would have to disagree with that. Yeah, some uh, aggressive tackling going on in this first match day, shall we say. In. Jones had a shot at it, but not able to put it on target as Tame puts in the corner held by Duke. It seems that Division 2 teams are taking advantage of the fact that uh, we bring in uh, referees on their uh, coaching program tenures. Yeah. Which, uh, they, they charge a cheaper rate from the union. Yeah. Cheaper is not always better, but these referees typically do a pretty good job. Shall we can afford laser? <laughs> yeah. There's a corner from Montreal. Nothing doing. Laos is also one of the teams in Division Two that had the fewest amount of moves in the off season. Is there? Oh is my is a goal. Lord. Off of the free kick. That is the Changshan Princess. Princess Changsha with an incredible volley. Excellent. And onside. And like we said, it was on Red Star Laos to get it back. They're good at that. Does it normally come from Changshan Princess? Uh, yeah. What does is a yellow card, and uh, already on one of those. Yeah, I believe the princess. I believe the princess ended up with the most yellows in D two last season. I I think it was time, not some time that was uh, the leader at the end of the year. Princess right behind them, and uh, yep. time on the book sheet already as well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thankfully, we don't keep track of yellows in this league. If you accumulate too many, it doesn't get you suspended. No, no, no. So it's become a point of pride. Yeah. It's a collector's item, you know? Yeah. As long as it doesn't turn into a red. Yeah, that's when you... Uh... We see a remarkably low number of red cards, I think. Usually only two or three a season. Yellow will uh, help you become a Red Star Lao player, uh, but Red will help you become teammates. Yeah. We're headed towards... Well, nope, we are at halftime. Yeah, Modelo picking up another yellow for Red Star Loud. That's four on the day for them. They just one more and they'll have half the team. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting to that nervy point. At what point do you do you step in as your coaching staff and say, Hey, I love the passion, but play smart. It's been a pretty even match so far, I think. Not really a huge advantage on either side. Laos did score from that pseudo set piece. Not technically a set piece, I don't think, but it's off of a dead ball. Yeah, I think it was off the free kick. Uh, it just went completely over everyone, including the goalkeeper. Yeah. No substitutions for either side. That was for the corner. Headed out. Crossed. Blocked. And cleared. Oh, Montreal! Oh. Nearly. That's Minone connecting with the post a second time this match.
few less than a foot in a diff in the uh, correct direction, and he's got two. Instead, he has none, and his team is at a standstill. Well, not at a standstill, but his team is drawn. Yeah, I think Montreal can certainly use one or two of those, but uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where both these teams decide they are as Bears in the Noni. There it is. Picks up the first. Been begging all day and finally gets the bounce in the right direction. Yeah. Run in, cross, headed home. That's difficult to do much about that. Yeah, a casual with the goal there. I oh, sorry, casual with the assist there. I was going to say. Montreal driving again. Oh, is that Manone no. again? It is. That's two for Manone. And now it's a 3 1 lead for Montreal. Dexter Manone, this, again, uh, fourth time's the charm, I suppose. Gets the bounce in the right direction, drills and sits the bar, underside, down into the net, and bounces out on its way. And uh, wow, what a goal. It's almost impressive that Minone has hit the bar that many times at this point. Oh, here's Hunter Jones, has a chance blocked by Fanta Benz. Certainly, we know now he's just aiming for a spot. Yeah. Every striker has their kind of uh, routine. That's Minone. At least this year. Yeah. Guerra shoots, Duke makes the save. I believe that's half of Red Star on a yellow now. Furious Chicken has one. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, if this team isn't, uh, nicknamed the Red and Yellow as of yet, they shot probably should be. Yeah. Manone forward to Maradona, shoots, and Kanders makes the save. Pressing now, though. Sniffing for a fourth. Yeah. Just outside from Cinnamon. Well, very nearly off that uh, free kick there. Yeah, and that is indeed the five yellows. Press. Fifteen fouls for Red Star and five yellows. Fourteen for Montreal and only one. And not really able to make the most of their nearly 63, 64 percent possession that they've had this match. Yeah. Yeah, and it, that's full time, out of nowhere. Last I looked, we were at 78 minutes, and all of a sudden the game is over, and it's a Montreal victory, 3-1. to one. Yeah, well, when you go up by a couple, it becomes easy to hit cruise control, and when you don't have the ball, like Montreal did, they only had 37% possession of the ball, uh... It becomes easier to just let your opponents play it out. Let them yeah. do the running. Yeah. Yeah, nobody had a particularly excellent day for Red Star. I mean, <laughs> five yellows. Yellow. Six yellows. It's amazing no one got sent off. Yeah, Guerra picked one up in the 90th. That is incredible. A uh, player of the match is Dexter Manone for the... Uh, Incredible crossbar work, as well as the two goals. Certainly, the, the uh, ground zone will not be happy with him. Uh, yeah, but he is at home, so I'm sure he'll uh, he'll be able to repay the favor with some paint work. Yeah, and that is all the matches for the day. Some uh, some interesting results. I can't really say that I'm shocked by any of the results. 
But I think it was a good look into what the new season is going to look like with all of the movement that we've seen. And we see the table up there, Reykjavik sitting on top with their goal difference, uh, large goal difference uh, margin. But, of course, it's only week one. So entirely possible that by this time next week, Reykjavik is on the bottom of the table. Absolutely, it can quickly turn heel in Division uh, 2, as we, we've seen time and time again. Yeah. Yeah, but yes, uh, uh... what a slate of games. That that is uh that's it though. Uh that's it for us here at uh, HQ as well. Uh thank you for joining us and if you're stucking out through the match, I appreciate you. Uh that's going to be it for us here. And today it's been T V C and I've been joined by Late. And I hope everyone has a good night.